Welcome back to the GCN Tech Clinic where we are gonna answer all of your tech related questions that you've been leaving underneath all our videos using the hashtag AskGCNTech. Now we have a fair few questions to get through today. We do. So let's get straight into it. Right, first question is from Dean Pinnock 7900 They say, hi, last year I bought a Wahoo kicker for my 2017 Specialized Roubaix, but after several months of use, last week 15 centimeters of the rear stay near the wheel axle snapped off. I'm looking to buy a new frame set, so I want to know if steel frames are more suitable than carbon fibre frames for turbo trainers. Do you want to hit this first? I'll, I've never heard of this before. No. And turbo trainers are designed to have bikes on them, carbon bikes, any sort of material bikes. And I think you have just been extremely unlucky here. Yeah. To have your bike snapped. I'm in complete agreement. I would say this is not attributed to putting it onto the turbo trainer. It would be that there's an issue with the frame, it's weaker, it's yeah. damaged, or it, yeah, it could I, I don't want to throw the blame on Dean himself, but it could be that he's just mounted or dismounted the bike incorrectly and put additional stress through one side. Yeah. It could there's be There's quite a few factors. But yeah, I think if the, the issue isn't the frame material, you just need no. to use it in the correct way. Carbon fiber frames, more than fine on turbo trainers, let's make that clear. Yeah. Next question, go on. Um, next question, hi Oli and Alex. If I choose a valve as short as possible, <laughs> will it then have an aerodynamic effect compared to a longer valve? Uh, the shortest valve possible will have the tiniest ever aerodynamic advantage over using a longer valve, but I would suggest you don't lose sleep over it. I've never, <laughs> this has never crossed my mind before. <laughs> never, think, ever, ever. I think that's the same for a lot of people, maybe. But it's a valid question if you're into these little marginal gains. I mean, yeah, mate, I'm just not good enough to think about all those tiny little gains. But. Get the short of hours for extra gains. After that, just enjoy cycling. <laughs> Bra Brownie185 says, Hi, GCN Tech Gurus. How would I determine the correct length for my chain if I already threw my old worn chain away? Oh, don't throw your old chain away! <laughs> That's the easiest solution. <laughs> right, it's actually, it seems complicated to size a chain, right? Because it feels like there's lots of different parts. Do you use the big chain with the little sprockets? What do you do? You're trying to achieve one simple thing, and that is to make sure that when your bike is in the smallest chain ring at the front and the smallest sprocket at the back, the derailleur has taken up the slack of the chain. And then you also want to make sure the chain is long enough so that when you're in the largest sprocket at the back and the largest chain at the front, the derailleur still has a little bit of movement left in it. If you have the chain too long, it'd be droopy in the easy gears. If you have a chain too short, it will stretch the mech too far and could damage it. You want to find that balance. The easiest solution is to make your chain longer than you think it needs to be because it's easier to make it shorter. Once you've made it short, you can't make it longer again. The easiest solution is take it to a bike shop. Yeah, or just go to <laughs> or just go to a local bike shop, support local. If it's a good shop, you can probably have a coffee while you wait. Oh, dreams. Uh, next question. Do you want to take this next question, Yo, Alex? Because okay. it's a bit of you. Tires, love it. Steve, <laughs> Stephen Willems says, Hi techies. Interesting title. I'm charmed by the specs of the P0 Race TLR Speed Core. I'm wondering if I could use that tire with a TPU inner tube, as I couldn't see a matching non-TLR version of it and I'm not ready to go all in on tubeless. The regular P0 race seems to still be the old version without the advantages of the newer TLR, and it seems most likely it's the speed core carcass that Pirelli made. Is this a big no-no, or do I go with it? What do you reckon? Right. Oh, I think you should just go tubeless. I do think that, but if you don't, <laughs> do go tubeless if you're thinking about it, because it's fine. If you want to use that tire with a TPU inner tube, yes, you can, but you're going to negate the advantages of this speed core liner. So the speed core liner is a technology developed around tubeless tires. So that's, it's the inner surface basically, which is helping to seal the tire up. So if you're gonna use an inner tube, the speed core liner is pretty much redundant anyway. So you'd probably be better off having a tire that doesn't have the speed core lining because it's designed to be a tubeless tire. Exactly what he said. <laughs> I think that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Yes, you can do it, but you're kind of giving away the advantage of the speed core tech. Mm. So therefore you might as well just get the P0 race tire, which is the tire designed to be run with an inner tube in it. And the same principle is gonna apply across different brands. If you don't wanna use tubeless, <coughs> avoid using a tubeless tire because you could get a better tire by using a clincher tube tire one. There you mm. go. Next question is in from Jared Daniel. Uh, I'm slight, I'm, I'm considering swapping to oversized jockey wheels simply oh. to make make cleaning them easier. 
I couldn't care less for any marginal gains, but they do look pretty cool and I imagine cleaning them would be significantly easier as there's more wheel exposed to clean. What do you think? Would cleaning actually be easier? <laughs> Is it worth it? Well, what do you think first? I mean, I think cleaning would be easier because it is bigger and you yeah. can clean it a lot easier. But I don't think that's the reason you should be going for one. <laughs> no, I don't. it seems some of these oversized pools are really expensive, right? Yeah. So, and I don't think anyone that invented an oversized pulley wheel system in their wildest dreams would think that somebody would purchase it because it looks like it's easy to clean. No. I would say if you want to do that, feel free to go do it. I just don't think it's necessarily worth it. No, Is that fair? me neither. And I feel like normal jockey wheels are fine to clean. Yeah, all right. Um, next question is from Eric. They say, why aren't 99% of patches tiny, stretchy, and thin with a little reinforcement? I can't remember the last time I had a puncture bigger than one millimeter, and something that size could be patched with just a single thickness of latex or butyl tube. Yeah, I think it's a valid point, but the reason patches are the size they are is so that it covers a whole wide range of punctures yeah. and you need to have a good contact patch in order for it to stick in place. So if yeah. you make it tiny, it's not going to stick on very well. Exactly. Simple. Yeah. Right, on to our last question. Hi, Alex, Holly and Manon. I use a track pump to inflate my tyres and when unclamping the head from the valve, air, some air escapes. Yeah. Using the gauge on the pump, I measured the I measured the pressure as much as 5 psi lower. For example, um, if I pump up the tire to 55 psi and then clamp it immediately, re-clamp the head, the pressure is 50 psi. Have you guys studied this? Should I compensate by inflating my inflating 5 psi more to my tires? Thanks, love the show. Wow. Um, we're it's, in the nitty gritty stuff this week. We are. We're, <laughs> we well, are. <laughs> It's, you, it's true though, but yeah. when, when you do take your valve off, a bit of air does come out naturally. Yeah. But I've never measured it. No. But to some people, 5 psi might be a lot. Well, I am a tyre nerd and 5 psi is a You'd get a sleepless night. Yeah, I would, I would tune my tyre pressures to within a margin of 5 psi. So I think this, this would be something that is going to affect it. But what I do want to highlight is it's going to vary massively on types of pumps and how you're taking the pump off because most of the air that comes out is coming out of the pump cable, rather the hose, rather than actually out the tire. And then I want to also highlight, if you lose this little bit of air as you set a pump off, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, granted. And then when you put the pump on, you also lose a little bit of air. So I feel like in reality, you're probably only losing two and a half PSI. Oof. And then I think it's not worth, not no. worth no, messing around at. If you know that you're losing a couple of PSI, just pump it very marginally yeah. over. And then you are, you've sorted your own issue out. Um, and I'm glad to hear they love the show as well. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> right. Um, sorry if we didn't answer your questions. As always, keep putting them in the comments section down below and we'll get to them in the coming weeks. Right, we're out of here, okay? See you in a bit. Bye.